which again is why it's such a joke when you get these History Channel shows and they talk about how scientists are so flummoxed by something on ancient aliens or whatever like that. You know, I'm sorry, dude, but they're not flummoxed. Okay, there's lots and lots and lots of material written on that thing you say is a mystery. And it's all discussed within the area specialty by the specialists. They write and publish for themselves. They do not write and publish for you or for the people who write for ancient aliens. It seems like New Testament scholars live in a kind of temporal bubble, like they don't pay any attention to anything before the New Testament. The problem is things are so specialized today that you have to pick your spot. I'll tell you myself as an example. I have a PhD in Hebrew Bible and Semitic studies, but where do I spend my time? I spend my time in Israelite religion, Genesis 1 through 11, a little bit on liturgical stuff, sacrifices and offerings and, and things like that. But I spend almost no time in, in wisdom literature other than you know, so, certain Psalms. The, the Kethuvim, you know, the, the later material, the post-exilic material, the minor prophets, I don't dip into those much at all unless like Amos 3, that has to do with divine counsel. So I'm, my head's in that. But you have to pick your specialization and, and try to stay up with the material just written on that. And it's extraordinarily difficult. You know, every year there, there are tens of thousands of pages published in scholarly journals on quote unquote biblical studies. And that divides into Old and New Testament. So if you're a New Testament person, you not only have to decide on a subfield within New Testament, am I a Pauline scholar? Am I a gospel scholar? Am I a Johannine scholar? You know, what, what am I? But then you also have to try to keep up with Second Temple Judaism because that's the context for your New Testament. And it's exceedingly hard to cover all the material and to really you know, have a feel for it. But you have to be able to at least move from one testament to the other to do biblical theology. It's just essential. Otherwise, you're just doing the theology of John or the theology of Matthew or the theology of Paul. They are Pauline scholars and that's all they do. Now their work is great. If you have a question on Pauline material, then there are names that I could think of that you, you instantly gravitate toward because that's where they spend their entire time. My advisor at, at Wisconsin, his field was wisdom literature, which meant you didn't want to write a dissertation in wisdom literature because he'd read everything. It would just be harder to, to convince him you're making a contribution because he, he'd literally been through everything. And there are people like that, that they camp out in one location and that's that. And they, they entrust, if they're on a faculty somewhere, oh, somebody else on the faculty does prophets. Somebody else on the faculty does this. Somebody else on the faculty does that. And, and they're into their field, and that's it. And they're calling it a day. I once had dinner with, with Hugh Ross. And the first thing I asked him was how his nonprofit decides how he spends his time. In other words, what does his average week look like? Hugh gets paid to spend... At that time, it was like 50, 60% of his time doing nothing but reading journal articles. And I said, that doesn't sound too difficult. And then, then he quickly made me realize that in the hard sciences, astronomy, biology, physics, all these hard sciences, they are literally producing tens, probably hundreds of thousands of pages of research every year in any of these disciplines. And it's because they have funding to pay people to do research. And lots of people do it. So he said he reads astronomy journals and physics journals. Reasons to believe hired other people to read, you know, biology journals and some other kind of journal because he, there's no way he could cover it all. So 40, 50% of his time was doing nothing but trying to keep up with astronomy and physics. And that was a challenge because he, he couldn't do it full time. So it, it, this is just the reality of scholarship. There's so much published, which again is why it's such a joke. You know, when you get these, these History Channel shows and, and they, they talk about how scientists are so flummoxed by something on ancient aliens or whatever like that. You know, I'm sorry, dude, but they're not flummoxed. Okay, there's lots and lots and lots of material written on that thing you say is a mystery. It's just that none of it's free on the internet. 
And it's all discussed within the area specialty by the specialists. They write and publish for themselves. They do not write and publish for you, okay, or for the people who write for ancient aliens. So it is literally a comedy. Every time I, I hear claims like that, I know instantly that someone has no idea of what scholarly journal literature even is. But again, how do you put a dent in that?